All right, here we are. A new year, 2023. It's time to kick things off with some high stakes poker. Okay, so I'm currently reporting from this really cool bridge that I drive past uh, on my way to the gym every day. And I've been wanting to walk on it. I gotta say, it's lived up to the hype. This is pretty sweet. Anyway, you guys don't care about bridges, instead about poker, and there is poker to be discussed. Primarily a session I played last night for starters, I played the biggest pot I've ever played in my entire life. This session took place at Hustler Casino live, but not really live because I jumped into a game that had just finished uh, being on stream, if that makes sense. I wasn't in this particular stream, but I was at the Hustler when it ended. I popped by the table. They were shorthanded and said, why don't you play for a little bit? We're only going to play an hour or two more. I said, why not? So down I sat with $100,000, and it turns out it was one of the craziest games I've ever been in. One player in particular was happy to straddle to 3,000, 4,000, sometimes 5,000, so the blinds don't even really matter in this game. Long story short, I opened ace-queen offsuit in a hand where the $3,000 straddle was on. Button makes it $20,000 to go, and then the $3,000 straddle calls the 20,000. Insane numbers, I know, but I'm trying to just think of it in terms of, you know, a normal poker hand. Action gets back to me and I got like $118,000 total to be exact. And I feel like with ace-queen offsuit against a button re-raise and a cold call, the best course of action is to probably rip it all in there. Probably folding seems okay sometimes. This is not one of those times. Like I said, this game was playing crazy and I think ace-queen rates to be the best hand often enough. So. That being said, it's time to send it in there. $118,000 all in with ace queen offsuit. Button folds, which is great because he's the one I was mostly concerned about. But the player who cold called the 20K, he calls again. Just like that, we have a pot that's a quarter million dollars and more than double of what my previous record was for biggest pot I've ever played. Somehow we run it twice and ace high is the winner on both boards. And just like that, in an hour and a half, I had the biggest win of my entire life, profiting around $150,000 on my first day playing poker in 2023. One more thing before we get into today's cards. I'm gonna be hosting semi-regularly a 2550 private game at Hustler Casino. It's gonna be every Sunday at two o'clock and this was all my idea. This isn't exactly like a paid sponsorship or anything. I've just been wanting to put together a game that uh, I can play on a semi-regular basis and it's kind of hard to find them. So I figured why don't I just build my own and see how it goes. I've never done something like this in a casino. So if you guys are interested in playing 2550 at Hustler Casino with me and other fun people, there will be straddles, bomb pots, etc. Hit me up on Instagram send me a message. I'm going to build an interest list. And like I said, we'll just see how it goes. I think it's going to be a fun time. Let's head to the Hustler Casino and play some 5-5 five five with 100 Annie. Let's go. All right, guys, here we are once again, this time playing 5-5 five five, No Limit with a $100 Big Blind Annie. I sit with $100,000 today, and in the first interesting hand, I raise it up to 300 with Ace Jack and get called by only Francisco on the button. Heads up to a flop of Ace-10-7 with two clubs. Being out of position on a board like this, I think it's all right to check top pair sometimes. He's gonna have a lot of hands that wanna start applying pressure, both draws and strong ones. So that's what I do. He does not check it back. Instead, he puts in a bet of $400. 
Nothing for me to do but call, so that's what I do. And we don't get the best turn card, the Nine of Clubs. This introduces some two pair, straight, and flush possibilities. Again, I check it over to him, and this time he bets $2,000. Already a tough spot right off the bat today. But after underrepresenting my hand and having some outs to a straight and perhaps better two pair if that's what he's got, I decide to make a somewhat speculative call. And we get some help on the river, the eight of spades. Now we've got a straight, but of course are still losing to a flush. Once again, I check, but this time Francisco checks it back. And it turns out we got lucky against a turned two pair. Shortly after, this hand comes up where there's a $200 straddle on and Brown Bala opens to 500 from first position. Action gets to me on the button and I've got some very nice cards, ace king, and almost always I think ace king is worth re-raising, but against a tight player who's opening from first position, it's probably okay to call sometimes, hardly ever, but this is going to be one of those times I choose to underrepresent my hand and just flat, we go heads up to a flop, which is once again good for me. King seven deuce with two spades. I've got the ace of spades and of course top pair top kicker, so when he checks, I'm gonna start betting. I put in $300 and he calls. Turn card is a blank, the five of hearts. He checks again and now I decide to crank up the pressure by betting $2,400. If I had any sort of bluff, including draws or just random air balls, I'd be betting this big as well. So I think doing that with good hands also makes sense. But interestingly enough, now we get check raised to 6,900. Perhaps a bit concerning, but after giving it some thought, I realized it's very unlikely that we're beat. A set of kings is nearly impossible since we can account for two of them. Pocket aces, also not very likely to play in this way, and I've got an ace myself, so even less likely than it already is. So unless he's got pocket sevens or pocket deuces, we should have the best hand. And even at that, I would expect him to fold pocket deuces from early position, at least sometimes, since like I said, this is what I consider a tight player. Really, the hand I'm most concerned with is pocket sevens. Aside from that, I suspect we've got the best hand, and he's probably turning some sort of draw or pair into a bluff. Maybe a hand like ace deuce suited, or seven x of spades, perhaps. And who knows, he might even be going for some thin value with a hand like king queen or king jack, putting me on a draw and trying to target those hands from me. So after a few seconds, I call, hoping for a clean river, and that's pretty much what we get, the ace of clubs. Now I improve to two pair, so if we were up against a hand like king seven suited, seven five suited, maybe even king deuce suited, we're beating those hands as well. Overall, it looks like a good card to me, and even more so when he bets only half pot, $8,000. With this bet size, I think it's indicative that we almost always have the best hand. Like I said, could still be up against a set, which in this case would just be a cooler, but either way, now I've gotta decide between just calling or shoving all in. As ridiculous as it sounds, I don't really know if going all in makes a lot of sense because not only does he have to have a worse hand that's also a good hand and is gonna call, but he's gotta be willing to make the call after betting the river and check raising the turn. All that being said, I eventually do decide to jam all in since he's got less than a pot sized bet behind. If he was deeper, perhaps I would have just called, but for only an additional 19,000 or so, I think we got to target the max from worst two pairs and perhaps even the occasional aces up, which of course we're ahead of. We don't get snap called, which is very good news, I think. But after a few minutes, he does eventually call with, as you guys can see, bottom set. And we end up losing a $70,000 pot, putting us deep in the red around thirty dollars or $40,000. Not good. Time to add some more chips and try to get things going back in the right direction. This next one is not nearly as complicated. $200 straddle is on. Early position opens to 600 and I look down at pocket nines in middle position. I decide to re-raise this one. I make it $2,000 and only the initial raiser Tal calls. Heads up, in position, to a decent flop, 8-6-3 with two hearts. So we flop the over pair with pocket nines. Doesn't happen too often. But either way, when he checks, I continue with a small bet, just like I would with pretty much all my hands. He makes the call and we don't get the best turn card, the five of hearts, obviously completing some draws and if we're still ahead, it's gonna be tough to get value from worse. So when he checks, I decide to check this one back and we go from bad to worse as the fourth heart rolls off on the river, the king of hearts, and of course an overcard to my measly pocket nines at this point. He checks it a third time and we do still beat some hands like ace highs or 
Perhaps the occasional smaller pair that does not contain a heart seems a little bit optimistic, but I think my hand is just a bit too strong to bluff with. I check it back and we do end up beating ace queen of diamonds. Nice. Later on, this one comes up where Francisco limps from early position and Brown Bala makes it 300. Pepe calls on the button and I'm looking down at a suited ace in the big blind, but not a very good one. Ace eight of hearts. Francisco does this thing once in a while where he limps in with a very strong hand and then squeezes. I'm a little bit cautious of that, so I decided to just call and then Francisco just calls also. So we go four ways to a flop on which we flop middle pair, but that's about it. 10, 8, 3, rainbow. Not much going on for anyone it seems because action checks all the way around, but what do you know, we turn aces up, and a very disguised aces up, I should say, the ace of clubs. I decide to check again, hoping someone bets and I can check raise, and sure enough, that's what happens. Francisco bets 600, Pepe calls on the button, and now I'm gonna spring the trap. I kick it up to $3,600, an additional $3,000 if they wanna see a river. Francisco ends up folding his gut shot, but Pepe, as you guys can see, has a straight draw and a flush draw. He's not going anywhere. River is a blank, I presume, the deuce of diamonds. So unless we were up against a hand like 5-4, we should be totally fine. But when he called the bet on the turn, I was getting a feeling that he most likely had some sort of draw or a hand that was maybe okay, but hoping to improve. And for that reason, I decide the best play here instead of continuing to bet is to check and hope he bluffs since it looks to me like all draws missed. Pepe is too smart for that though. After I check, he immediately checks it back and we end up winning a $9,000 pot. Later on, this hand comes up where Tal opens from early position to 500 and I'm looking down at King-9 suited in late position. Not really strong enough to call, although I wouldn't hate that. Instead, I prefer to mostly fold and occasionally re-raise hands like these. This time, I choose the latter, kick it up to $2,000, and only Tal makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Queen Jack 5 with two spades. My exact hand doesn't connect very well at all. I guess I have a straight draw if a 10 comes, but not much aside from that. However, this is a board where I would often still have plenty of strong hands, including pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket aces, pocket kings, ace queen, king queen, you guys get the idea. So with that in mind, I continue betting $1,400 and Tal makes the call. Turn card is the six of diamonds, bringing in a second flush draw. He checks it again. And like I said earlier, if I had any of those strong hands, I'd be betting. And that still applies to this turn card. Could still have a bunch of strong hands as well as bluffs. When that's the case, I decide to bet big. This time I put in $10,000 over the size of the pot and Tal ends up folding his second pair, so good result. And with that, we move to a very interesting hand that occurred about an hour later. In this one, there's an early position open to $80. Pepe calls the 80, and I have a six of hearts in late position. I think calling is okay, but I decide to get a little aggressive here and raise it up instead. 80 doesn't seem like a very strong hand either way, so I make it $400 to go. Initial raiser calls, as does Pepe. We flop top pair on ace four deuce rainbow. Action checks to me, and I think probably the best play is to check it back here. But for some reason, I decide to bet $400. Don't think that's too much of a mistake though. Kier, however, disagrees with that and check raises to 2400. Pepe gets out of the way and action's back on me. Unless we're up against a flopped monster, we should still have the best hand. And I believe this player is capable of bluffing with hands like bottom pair or middle pair occasionally. So I decide to call and we see the king of hearts on the turn. Expecting him to check at this point, but he does not. Instead, he bets a very big size of $9,000 into a $6,000 pot. Quite the big bet. And I think this size indicates either a very strong hand or, again, a complete air ball. Hands that I'm afraid of are 5-3 suited, which of course is the flop nuts. Aces up, maybe, although I'm not sure aces up plays this way every time. And of course, pocket fours and pocket deuces. However, like I said on the flop, I think we could be getting bluffed sometimes. And this player in particular, I predicted, might try something like this at some point, either against me or one of the other players at the table. So with ace six, not a very strong hand, but my gut feeling was telling me that we still have the best hand. I make the call and we go to a river. Unfortunately, it is not ideal. The three of hearts. And the reason I say that is some of the hands I suspected he could be bluffing with contain a five, such as five, four suited, maybe six, five suited, 
maybe even Ace-5 suited at some point, although honestly that seems a little optimistic. And of course, five do suited. You know, all these hands that have removal to the nuts and also contain a pair for some possible outs. So yeah, not my favorite card. And even more so when he decides to shove all in for $20,000, nearly a pot-sized bet. And now we're in a very tough spot. On one hand, I don't have much going on, just top pair, which at this point is not a very strong holding. But at the same time, he could still be bluffing, but I don't know. It just seems nearly impossible for him to have a bluff in this spot that didn't improve on that particular river card. And since I would almost never have a five, he could still be going for value with two pair and sets. So on the surface, I actually think it's a very easy fold. But I don't know, for some reason, my spider senses were kicking in that we might have the best hand, but I just couldn't come up with enough bluffs that don't improve on this particular river. And that's just if we had the best hand all along, which again, I can't be 100% certain of. So after a few painful minutes, I decide to make the fold. And at this point, Kier turns over the very ballsy bluff with King-8 suited. Nice play by him. Unfortunately, I end up making the incorrect decision on this river. But that's life. That's how it goes with poker. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Can't dwell on it, however. Still plenty of poker to be played. And with that, we move to this next hand where I've got 5-4 suited. Brown Bala opens to 300 from early position, and I decide to make it $1,000. I think re-raising with hands like these once in a while is good to, you know, balance it out with aces and kings, the good stuff. Action gets back to Brown Bala, and he calls. We go heads up to a flop of king, eight, six, rainbow, but unfortunately, no spades out there. I know, five, four isn't always going to connect, but come on. Really, this is the flop. Either way, I could still have a lot of strong stuff since I re-raised pre-flop. So after he checks, I decide to bet $600. I do have a gut shot, you know, a seven would be cool after all. Brown Baller calls, and what do you know, the turn is a seven, giving me a very disguised straight. And of course, I didn't know it at the time, but giving Brown Baller a set. This is what you call an action card, of course. Brown Baller checks again, and this time I decide to put in a bet of $2,600. Fingers crossed that he's got something, and it seems like he does because after some time, he check raises to $7,000. Like I said earlier in this video, this player in particular is usually someone who has strong hands. Don't see him bluff too often, and he plays relatively tight, so when you have a good hand, it's of course good news to be up against someone like that as they raise you. The question now is, do I just call or do I put it all in? He's only got around $20,000 behind, and I think both options have some merit. The problem with just calling is that there are so many river cards that might kill the action, like any nine, any 10, any five, you know, cards that put a one-liner to a straight out there. But if we just get it all in now, that won't be an issue. So. Of course, the downside to jamming all in is we fold out all his potential bluffs. But like I said earlier, this player, at least from my experience, doesn't bluff super often. So I decide to get it all in right now. And sure enough, he calls. Pot is now $56,000. Once again, playing a very big one against Brown Bala. We decide to run it twice, looking for the board to not pair, of course. And what do you know, we hold on both. So after losing a very big pot to him early on, we get most of it back here, just in time to end the night, down only a few thousand dollars. But stay tuned because I played a few interesting hands after the stream ended. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the hands. So this is the upstairs section at Hustler. I don't know how many of you guys have even been to this casino, but if you have been here and you haven't checked out this area, definitely should. It's a pretty cool view. I know on stream, it didn't go very well, I think. I believe when the stream ended, I was down maybe 10 or 20K, but I was not the final results because 
I played a few interesting hands post stream. So without any further ado, let's get right into those. Action gets to me in late position with queen nine off suit. Probably should just fold this hand, but it's late. And I feel like gambling a bit. So playing a bit wider than I probably should, if I'm being honest. Either way, I make it 300. Francisco calls in the small blind and brown baller calls in the big blind. So three ways to a flop, which instantly rewards my poor pre-flop decision making as it comes queen nine five with two diamonds. So we flop top two on a very draw heavy board. Action checks to me, I bet 700 into around 1,000, and Francisco check raises to 2,700. Brown ball of folds, when it gets to me, I guess you could argue that maybe putting in another raise, you know, we could get some value from like flush draws and a queen and stuff, but I prefer not to do that. Let him uh, keep blasting away if he is bluffing. So I just call in position, and we get a great turn card, the Ace of Clubs. Pretty much a brick, I think. When he bets $6,000, once again, same plan as the flop, just gonna call in position and see what develops. So I put in the chips, hoping for a clean river card, and that's exactly what we get. It's an offsuit six. Black six of spades, I believe it was. Completely innocent looking card. Now it's just a matter of how much he's gonna bet or if he's gonna bet at all. If he doesn't, how much am I gonna bet, etc. But after some thought, he indeed puts in a bet and a healthy one at that $24,000 representing either a very strong hand or just a bluff don't really see any point in raising so I call right away and he says good call turns over 10-5 suited for bottom pair turned into a bluff gotta give him credit if I didn't have a hand as strong as mine it might have worked but this time the pot goes in our direction and we finally get out of the hole but that wasn't it. This one came up a bit later on against Nick Airball, who I'm sure you guys know. If you don't, he's quite the action player. Ishan, aka Brown Bala, opens in early position to 500. We're now playing 51-2. Nick Airball calls and I re-raise on the button with pocket jacks. Initial raise or folds, but Nick Airball calls again. So we go heads up to a flop, which is once again a very good one for me. Comes Jack, three deuce with two hearts. So we flop top set once again on a somewhat draw heavy board, although not as connected as the previous hand. Either way, when he checks to me, I'm gonna keep betting. Bet $900, I believe, small bet on this board. And he check raises to 3,000. We're pretty deep here. I have like 120K and he covers me. So I think putting in another raise has some merit, but once again, same game plan as before. I just call. We got a decent turn card, the queen of clubs. Should be a total blank. Unless we're up against pocket queens, which, you know, given the preflop action is essentially impossible. But that doesn't stop Nick from betting. He bets $10,000. I think calling is more than okay, but can't do the same thing all the time. So I decide to raise it up to $32,000. And unfortunately, I misclicked. I only made it $22,000, which is $10,000 less than what I meant to do. I guess that's uh, what happens when you've been playing all day and aren't 100% focused. You know, it doesn't happen often, but once in a while it does. You just hope that it's not in big pots, but this is a big pot. <laughs> anyway, I make it 22,000, he calls right away, and we don't get a great river. It puts three to a flush and three to a straight. A lot of draws get there, and uh, I'm kind of hoping he doesn't lead out for a huge bet. And he doesn't. Instead, he thinks for a bit and checks it over to me. Of course, my hand's super strong, but Nick's a good player, and I'm not entirely sure if he's gonna call with a worse hand. And if I'm being 100% honest, I'm a bit afraid to uh, face a check raise all in for what would be a $300,000 pot, just about, maybe a little less. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I thought about it for a bit, but ended up just checking it back and he announced a queen. I have no idea how he had a queen. I guess maybe like queen 10 suited backdoor flush draw type of thing on the flop. Anyway, those two hands definitely helped get things going in the right direction. I also won a few other small pots, just started running better, got a few small bluffs through, etc. When it was all said and done, I ended up winning $42,000 despite being down 10k or 20 or whatever it was when the stream ended and I'm up almost 200k in 2023 between uh, this session and the one I told you guys about at the start of this vlog. Just insanity and that's how it goes when you play big games you're gonna have these monstrous swings. For now I'll enjoy this positive variance, this nice heater 
that we've been on continued from 2022. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. Don't forget about the uh, 2550 I'm gonna be having here downstairs. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun game. I think there's a lot of interest. I've already gotten a word from some of the Hustler Casino Live players that uh, they want to jump in. So, like I said, if you're interested, hit me up on Instagram, and we'll go from there. Seating will be very very limited. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time, good luck out there at your local tables. Peace.